Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial on how to make this Doctor Strange rune effect. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's clear the scene and add in a circle. Make sure that the count right here for the vertices is 6 because we want this to be hexagon shaped. By default it will be 32 but make sure it is set to 6. Next what we want to do is go into edit mode. Click 1 to select the vertices and press E so that we make a ton of faces. Let's scale those in a little bit. And now over here, we want to press U and click Mark Seam. Let's go into the UV tab for this. And now what we are going to do is select this, press U, and then click Reset to reset the UV scale one to one. Now we want to click A to select the rest of the vertices and faces. And now click U, uh, follow active quads. And what this will do is make it so that all the squares follow in line with the topology. But we want this all to fit inside of the base square right here. So we're going to select all the vertices in the editor. Select this and press 0.5 to bring everything to the middle. Then scale this on the x-axis to bring it all the way into the image bounds. As we can see, it lines up pretty well. Next, what we could do is get to the fun part, shading. So let's open this, click new for a new scene. And what we want to do is get the UV map into here. There we go. And next, what we are going to do is look at the UV map, make sure everything's okay. That seems pretty good. And then we're going to bring this over here and use a converter, separate X, Y, Z node. Let's put that over there. And next, what we are going to do is use the Y axis and a color ramp. What we want to do is make a gradient in the middle right here. So let's add in another node right here, set this one to one and this one to zero. And as we can see, we have a gradient here but we want to constrain this gradient for the glowing effect. So let's first add in the emission and transparent nodes, shader emission and shader transparent, transparent. There we are, hook those together. Uh, emission should be on the bottom just because of the way it works. Now, if we hook this into here and look, uh, it's not quite working. And that's because we need to go into the blend mode if you're using Eevee and select alpha blend. Make sure the shadow mode is set to none because these should not cast shadows. There we are, that's working pretty well. Let's set this to orange just to make it look more Dr. Strangey and set the emission to something like 15. Next, what we are going to do is make this look more uh, contrasty. You'll see in a second. Let's add in a math node, set it to power. Set the power to about four or so. There we go, we're getting a better fall off but we could constrain this even further. If we bring this over to here, select color ramp, set this to black while using the B-spline interpolation. If we bring this down, there we go. If we can, yeah, that seems to work pretty well. Now we could turn up the emission even more, maybe not too much. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And now if we go over here, we can add in some noise to this scene now. So let's add in a noise texture. You could leave it to 3D uh, because we're going to be using that later to animate it. Let's use a mix RGB node, set it to linear light, hook up that into there. And as we can see, we're now getting some distortion, but let's control this. So let's move this over here and add in two vector math nodes. One is going to be add and one is going to be multiply. Let's set the multiply to one. Now let's set the scale to like, hmm, maybe around two on the x-axis. The y-axis seems pretty okay so far. Let's set the distortion up a bit just to make it look a bit more magical. And if we go over to here, we could see if we animate this, the phase changes over time. So let's set that to something like hashtag frame for the frame number divided by 48. And if we play the animation, we could see that's a tad too fast, but I think it's good for what we need. There we go. Actually, let's set that to more like 96. Yeah, that seems pretty good. That is basically the entire shading effect. We could go and keep editing the mesh, make it, uh, yeah, there we go. Constrain it a little bit more to make it look more like a magical line rather than a flat plane. And next, what we are going to do is add more of these, all rotating in different directions, like in the movie. So to do that, we're going to use a bit of geometry nodes. Nothing complicated, don't worry. Let's open up the geometry node editor, select new. And we are going to add in an instance on points node, 
right here, and a mesh line node, uh, mesh primitive. There we are, well, let's bring that up here. The original geometry will go into the instance, and the mesh line will go into the points. There we are. Select uh, endpoints on this so that we can select the height and then just change how many we want after the fact. There we are. That's pretty good. And now let's randomize the effect by using a random value node. Random value. And let's hook that up into the scale. As we can see, we're getting tons of random scales for each new uh, hexagon. Perfect. Next, what we're going to do is randomize the rotation by using a vector random value node. Set the value to 1 on the z-axis and negative 1, like this. That should be good. Now let's hook that up into there. As we should see, it is looking pretty good. Let's set this to 2 and negative 2, just to get more variation. You could change the c to randomize the effect even further for the x and the y. I think that's pretty good. And now what we are going to do is animate these turning in different directions. So, let's add in a vector math node and set it to scale. Let's put that right there. Let's input hashtag frame again to get the time info, divided by 48. And as we can see, it is now animating quite well. But let's edit the shading a little bit because it's looking too... Too much like lines and not enough like wispy magical smoke coming off of them. So let's go into the multiply node and scale that up by a bit until it starts looking... Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Maybe turn down the x-axis a bit. Yeah, there we go. That's pretty good. If we want a random face for each face on here, we could go and add in an input object info node. And because all of these are instances and not real geometry, we could go and select random. And as we can see, we get a different value for each of these. So we go into here, into the vector math node, select this one, and select multiply. Oops. Multiply. Math multiply. There we go. And hook this into the add. And we'll see once I go back into here that... There we go. Once I turn this up, we get a random face for each face on here, or each instance which is very useful and will be used in many tutorials going forward, so you better learn it. But yeah, that's basically the entire effect. We could keep changing all the parameters here, trying it up and down. We could change the colors to make it more like the time stone rune effect. But yeah, that is basically the entire tutorial. Thank you for coming by. If you want to see more stuff of mine, look at my Gumroad page, my Twitter page, Make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Some free products are coming out for 3.0 Geometry Nodes, so stick around, and I hope you have a very nice day. I'll see you next time.